Hey guys, this is going to be a really short video, uh, but it's one that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. And it's, uh, it's around the psychology and the kind of self-management of how you can boost your online chest rating, uh, how you can keep it going up, um, ideally, day after day after day, and avoid it going down. So um, this is simply based on my, my own experience, what I found works for me. So five simple tips, if you can remember these, if you can apply these, you should improve. Number one, give it time. What that means is that you need to set proper time aside to play. If you're playing um, on your phone while you're doing something else, while there's other stuff going on around you, you're not going to be playing your best. The way to improve your chess is to play your best chess. And I've said this over and over and over again. Um, probably the number one rule for somebody who wants to improve, if somebody wants to break through the 1,000 uh, 1, point barrier and, and keep going from there. I've said it so many times. Play time controls that are long enough so that you can examine the whole board, look at all the possible moves, pick some candidate moves, and then evaluate for yourself which of those moves are going to be the best for you, or the, the best move that you can find, that you are personally convinced within the limits of your experience, within the limits of your skill, um, that you think that is the best move on the board, hands down. It, it, it might not be the absolute best move. I'm sure that Stockfish and other computers will find much better moves or more experienced players will, will find better moves. It doesn't matter. It's got to be the moves that you think are the best. Okay. Um, so the, the other part of that is, is not to rush, right? Really make it uh, important to give yourself that time to focus on your game. Okay. So for me personally, what I tend to do is I, I quite often wake up quite early in the morning and I might play chess from say 7 a.m. till 8 a.m. Um, another little tip which I'll just throw in here as well is that if you've got a tablet then uh, and, and if you're playing on chess.com which I'm assuming you most people do many people do um, the chess.com mobile app on the tablet has a feature called confirm each move and I found that's, that's really, really helpful because what it lets you do, if you play uh, daily chess on chess.com, you'll, you'll know this because it lets you make a move, drop the piece, and then it's got a check marker across to say, yes, I'm going to commit to that move or no, I'm going to take it back. Okay. So what that helps you do, particularly when you're a beginner, is play the move and then step back, look at it again and go... Okay, is there anything stupid about that move? What does this move change? Yeah, so I like to play my more competitive games more often than not on a tablet rather than on my uh, computers because um, the, the computer when you're playing rapid or below, anything below daily, uh, doesn't have that option right now on chess.com. Okay, so put the time aside so that you can really focus, so that you're not going to be distracted, so that you can play your best chess. Okay, let's move on. Second one, use the time. Use the time that is available. Um, it's much better. So let's say you've got one hour a day, right? You're putting one hour a day aside for your uh, competitive chess when you really want to focus, when you really want to play your best. Um, if you've got one hour, I would suggest playing two or three games maximum in that time. It's much, much better to play one 30-minute rapid game than it is to play three 10-minute games and lose those games, right? It's better to win one game per day than to play three and win one and lose two. Okay, because if you're winning one and losing two because you are trying to rush your way through, then your rating is going to be dipping down. Okay, so whatever time you, you are giving yourself, use that time to the full. 
Another thing that's really important is if you're going to play, let's say, a 30-minute game, I tend to play 30-minute rapid uh, for my serious play. Um, if I've got 30 minutes on the clock, right, I'm going to be thinking roughly 10 minutes for the opening to develop my pieces, get castled, etc. 10 minutes for the middle game, 10 minutes for the end game, right? If I allow myself that time and say, actually, I should be spending that time, that's going to stop you rushing. Uh, there's so many games, I and mean, there's plenty that I've analysed on, on this channel, on Chess Bootcamp, um, where the game is essentially lost within the first 60 seconds, and it's like a 30-minute game or a 60-minute game. It's insane. Why, why play a 30-minute game if you're going to play it as though it's Blitz? And just don't do that. Whatever you think your, your instincts are telling you, Take the time to breathe. If, if you aren't 100% sure that that is the best move that you can find on the board right now and that you can rationalize that to yourself, don't play that move. And if you're rushing those moves, if, if you, you want to be blitzing out moves like that, then play blitz. Play blitz and, and forget about your rating. It doesn't really matter. Okay? But use the time that you give yourself. Don't, don't play longer time controls and rush. You shouldn't really rush on uh, any time type of game. Okay, number three, don't chase losses. So this is um, a phrase that came to me the other day. This comes from gambling. Right? There's a lot about safe and responsible gambling in advertising right now that you see all over the place. Chasing losses means you get this kind of panic when you're, you're gambling, whether it's in the casino or it's online or it's online poker or whatever. Personally, I, I, I don't gamble. But... Um, Chasing losses means, oh no, I'm down 100, right? So I need to get that money back. And then you get tense and you get anxious and you get unhappy, right? Um, you've got to get over that kind of mindset when it comes to chess, okay? This is probably one of, is one of the most important things that, um, that, that I've learned about playing is if I'm tired or if... if I've been doing too much, if my brain's just not up to it, if, if I'm missing things, if I'm getting wrong-footed by my opponents, if, I, if I'm missing things that I really know that I ought to have spotted um, on the board and getting checkmated and stuff like that, then um, really important, I know that it's time to stop. Right? Stop playing chess and do something else. Take a break, go for a walk, have a sleep, whatever it is that you need to do. You know, um, If you're losing, stop playing. That's the thing with online chess. It's not, a, it's not like you've turned up to the US Open tournament or whatever. Right? You can walk away at any time. So just do, just do that. Right? If you're playing badly, stop playing badly. The number one tip to improve your chess rating is play your best chess. Okay, number four. This is, goes along very much with, with that idea of playing your best chess. Play the best uh, opponents that you can find. All right. So um, one pretty good thing that you can do is you can go, if you're on like chess.com, uh, I mean, generally it will match you to people who are in about 150 points of your own rating, but you can go on to open challenges and look for time controls where the um, and you can actually pick players who are 50 points 100 points higher than you and that really sharpens your your mind for the game if you think about it I mean there's sometimes this is one mistake that I've done I don't want you to make is I'm thinking oh you know I'm I'm tired um, it's the end of the day, I'm going to go on to open challenges and I'm going to pick somebody 200 points lower rated than me and see if I can just get two or three points, you know, just, just bump up my rating just a little bit before, before the end of the day and I go for my tea. Um, the problem with that is, as you, as you very well know, that your rating, you, you are risking losing more points if you lose to a, a lower rated player. So you've got more to lose if you lose, and less to gain if you win. So every game that you approach, really, you should be approaching with the same mindset. You should be approaching it as, um, I'm going to take all the time, I'm going to come up with the best moves, I'm going to scan the whole board, I'm going to consider my own king's safety, 
right? The number of times when I've thought, I'll just do a quickie, you know, I'll, I'll just jump on a game and uh, somebody's... In, it might be a 30-minute game, I'm trying to win it in five minutes, and that's just ridiculous. And, and then I get suddenly sucker-punched by somebody who's like 300 points lower rated than me, and I suddenly my rating drops down 15 points, and I'd have only have won one point if I'd won the game. It's absolutely pointless. On the flip side of that, if you're playing somebody who's higher rated than you, then you actually have the advantage in a couple of ways. One is that you've got more to win. So let's say you're playing somebody like 100 points higher than you. That might be like a 10-6 game. So you might stand to win 10 rating points, but only lose 6 if you lose. And the other advantage that you have when you play stronger players is that you might catch them feeling overconfident, right? And then they might get sloppy. Even though their their vision might be better, you know, they might know a few more tricks, a few more traps, a few more tactics than you do. You, it, it, It's all there on the board. All the information that you need to win a game is there on the board. Right? Everyone plays by the same rules. Everyone's playing on a 64-square board, right? It's all the same uh, terms and conditions that apply to both players. Um, so take the time that you need whoever you're playing, but if you can play better players, then you can really grit your teeth. You can really use that time. And if they think they're going to get a quick victory, slow down. <laughs> slow it down. Frustrate them, right? Really take... You know, let's say you're playing... Um, a 30 minute game, right? Make, take at least one minute for every single move. At least one minute. Even if you think that the next move is obvious, if, if it's a no brainer, stop. Don't do that stuff. Consider every move on the board. Consider why is that, what are the benefits of that move? What are the risks? How does it weaken me? How does it strengthen me? How does it weaken my opponent's position? All that kind of stuff. Every single move, you will get better because you are practicing playing at your best and you get what you practice if you practice playing poorly if you practice playing in a rushed manner then that's what you'll get you will get poorer you will not improve you're just practicing playing badly okay so pick the the strongest opponents you, you can find i mean don't necessarily go out to find somebody who's 500 or a thousand points higher rated than you I mean, I have beaten somebody 500 points higher rated than me before, um, but it's it's very unlikely. Um, but that's it. One of the most important things, if you want to improve, pit yourself against stronger opponents, not weaker opponents. Okay, and the final one is to train. Uh, so many people, I think, just go online, go on to chess.com, go on to Lee Chess or whatever, and they all they do is play. And all they do is play Blitz or Bullet. I see people rated under a 1,000 playing Bullet Chess. It's absolutely ridiculous. Take the longer time controls. If you're, if you're playing in a, in, a, in a rushed and frantic manner, then, you, you know, you might as well just throw your rating out the window, okay? Um, and most of chess particularly when you are a beginner or improving player, right? All the way up to like 2000. Um, it's about tactics. It's about being able to see, okay, if this, then that. It's about calculation. And uh, puzzles, puzzles on, there's, a, you can go on chess.com or there's like a chesspuzzles.net or chesspuzzles.org. There's a free site there that, where you can just practice puzzles as well. And that will keep track of your progress and, and feed you, uh, line up appropriate puzzles for your rating as well. Um, that costs nothing. Um, puzzles really make you stop and think and look and calculate. Uh, like we say, everyone's playing by the same rules. All the information is actually there in front of you um, to tell you the best way to proceed the difference between stronger players and weaker players is that the stronger players look deeper into the uh, the information that's there on the board in front of you. And uh, puzzles and tactics help you to do that. So 
and, and another really important thing is don't treat it as though you've got to do like one puzzle every 30 seconds or every every minute it's better just like we're saying with the games just like we're saying with gameplay it's better to sit down and do one puzzle and really sit there and think it through because what you're practicing then is you're practicing looking two moves three moves four moves ahead of that position to try and solve the puzzle in your mind before you make that first move and it can be really really frustrating it can be really annoying for me um, if when I go on puzzles and I think oh I couldn't have seen that that was, that was too difficult how, how was I meant to spot that well you can spot it you can spot it if you sit figure it out and say if I do this then what are my opponent's options okay how many squares can that piece move to if it moves to there then what will happen because you're uh, the computer opponent when you're playing uh, tactics and, and puzzles is going to make the best moves that it, it can find in that situation okay and you can figure that out if you practice doing that it's it's your tactical vision in the games that will improve you uh, and carry you past the thousand point rating uh, barrier and beyond it's all about tactics 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 until you are a chess master okay so uh, that's that's pretty much it the last thing I'd say is that if you are feeling tired and if you know that you're not a hundred percent and your brains not quite firing on all cylinders don't play games why don't you go and do some puzzles go and do some puzzles go and do a lesson on chess.com or go onto YouTube and, and look at a video about um, like a slower game played by a master player and just just let it absorb into your consciousness the, the way that they're thinking or the way that they're looking at the game and approaching the game um, if you're tired don't do it uh, so there you go that is my my best five tips for improving 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 your online chess rating uh, apply these and I think that you will see the difference okay let me know uh, in the comments if this has been useful uh, other than that I will see you next time.